CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 6 p.m. Well, tonight at 6, L.A. City Council member Nuri Martinez steps down as president after that leaked audio recording catches her making outright offensive and racist remarks, even going as far as to call the black child of another council member a little monkey in Spanish. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pat Harvey. Now, that recording has received widespread backlash from national, state, and local leaders. And while Martinez did apologize and resign as president, she's still a member of the council. Well, tonight we have in-depth analysis on what was said, the response, and how it impacts Los Angeles leadership moving forward. And CBS2 political reporter Tom Waite begins our coverage with a breakdown of how this all unfolded. Tom? Hey, good evening to you, Pat. As you said, the backlash so intense. Tonight, Mayor Eric Garcetti here in L.A. is calling for the resignation of the council members in question. As you said, Nuri Martinez resigning the council presidency earlier in the day, but it did little to calm things down. That's the voice of now former council president Nuri Martinez having a conversation from a year ago with council members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo, along with L.A. Labor Federation President Ron Herrera. Knock L.A. posted the audio. It's unknown who recorded the conversation filled with crude and racist language that we had to bleep. This white guy with a little black kid. Councilwoman Nuri Martinez can be heard making racist insults against Councilman Mike Bonin's two-year-old son. Martinez suggests the child was acting inappropriately during the Kingdom Day parade back in 2017 and then calls him a little monkey in Spanish. I was like, this kid is a beat down. Like, let, me, let me take him around the corner and then I'll bring him back. There's nothing you can do to control him. Martinez on Monday morning resigned as council president, but not her council seat, releasing a statement apologizing, but asking for an opportunity to make amends. The LA Times also reports De Leon referred to Bonin as a fourth black member of the city council. And De Leon, who is also now facing calls for his resignation, released a statement apologizing. Council member Gil Cedillo, also recorded making inappropriate comments, has apologized as well. Councilman Marquise Harris Dawson says they all need to resign. We can't have a city council where every day we go in, there's someone sitting there that called the black child a monkey. And there are likely to be big developments tomorrow. That's because the city council is scheduled to meet on Tuesday morning. Also tomorrow night, a mayoral debate. Reporting live in the Fairfax District, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. Well, thank you so much, Tom. And before tomorrow morning, we're going to talk about whatever happens to the three council members now. The bigger question is how does the city and its people move forward? Uh, let's bring in our panel to discuss what happens next. And joining me now is Pastor Oliver E. Bowie from Abundant Living Family Fellowships, Cal State LA professor Dr. Julianne Malvo, and Reverend Walter Contreras, a faith root organizer for CLUE, Clergy and Laity United for economic justice. Welcome to you all. Thank you. And as Thank we mentioned, you. Martinez did step down, but not entirely. She's still on the yeah. LA City Council. So Dr. Julianne Malvo, I wanna start with you. Will resigning her presidency be enough for the community or should she leave the City Council entirely? Well, she should leave the City Council entirely. Uh, in politics, it's always been off base to talk about people's children. So for, I mean, you, the Bush children, got all kind of passes. The Obama children didn't stay in trouble, but Michelle and Barack were very fierce about keeping their kids out of the paper. Um, and we could go back to others, Jimmy Carter, et cetera. How dare this woman call a black child a monkey? And how can her colleagues, as a brother said, Marquise, go sit in the room with them, knowing how, what they feel, what they think, and what they will do? Because this was not just about rhetoric. It was also what they thought, what they were going to do to marginalize black voting participation, black influence. Here's the deal. She should resign 
she resigned her pre presidency, she should resign from the council, but that's not going to be enough. We have to really talk about the structural nature of anti-blackness and how it continues to show up in this city, how many, we, everybody brown ain't down, how many of our Latino brothers and sisters are allies, but this just showed that many and many of those in power and some of the most high profile Latinos in the country, frankly, are anti-black. That's an issue that we have to deal with. All right, Dr. Malvo, I'd like to bring in Reverend Contreras here and ask him that same question. Should Neri Martinez step down from the council? Maybe should all three step down from the council? And also what uh, Dr. Malvo just talked about. Is there this, this uh, specious relationship on the part of, of some brown and black constituents? I believe that they should all resign. I've been working for 15 years mm -hmm. with the black uh, clergy and then people from different religions we built a coalition and we've been working very very hard to make sure that this kind of thing does not happen so they they are destroying everything that we have worked for for the last 15 years i think that the right thing to do the moral thing to do is accept responsibility and resign because we cannot tolerate we got to cut it from the root that root problem is right there with these politicians are trying to grab power and mm -hmm. using, you know, uh, us, Latinos and African Americans, you know, as pawns. You know, we, we can't tolerate that. So my suggestion and my recommendation is get off your position. You lost your chance to lead well. We must stop this because there's a lot of work that has been done to build trust mm -hmm. among the African American. And I've been one of them of many. I mean, Pastor Oliver, who will probably you hear from him also participated with us for so many years to make sure that we are doing the right thing as we are representing African American. There is no place for racism, no place for racism right now. No, thank you, sir. And I just want to pick up on what you said. I'm going to bring in uh, Pastor Bowie here, it, it, giving some historical uh, preference here. The L.A. riots, of course, were 30 years ago this year, in April. It's hard to believe, though, in 2022 that we're still dealing with this type of behavior from people in positions of power. That's something that Reverend Contreras just spoke about. Now, Pastor Bowie, what do you think has changed the most in the last three decades regarding public response to racism? I don't know what's changed the most, but unfortunately, as we are facing uh, this incident which took place, I have discovered, unfortunately, many people, once they gain power, unfortunately, tend to emulate those very things that they once said they hated once they are in power. I think as we uh, move forward 30 years, and I believe also with the climate do a great deal of the last administration in the White House has also emboldened many people to speak what's on their hearts and on their minds. Um, and uh, unfortunately, here in Los Angeles, this situation has come about. And what it has done, unfortunately, it has taken us back yeah. uh, from all the hard work that black and brown have done together. But what I'd like to say, I think that we have an opportunity once these leaders, unfortunately, who have made these statements move out the way that our goal as black and brown and with all, but especially with black and brown, that we look to build bridges and not walls. All right, uh, Reverend Bowie, thank you so much. Dr. Malvo, I want to pick up on uh, what uh, Pastor Bowie and Reverend Contreras were talking about. I brought in the riots from 30 years ago because that's when we first had to form commissions and coalitions to talk about things that were happening. Reaction here, is it different this time? Because it seems like people have boldly spoken out from all sides about what has happened here. And I, it seems like they resent the work that has been done over the past 30 years and how you know, it seems to have not necessarily fallen apart, but when you hear our leaders talk in this manner, it sort of puts them on the offensive, like, look, we've done all of this work and you're, you just could possibly dismantle it with, with just one leaked audio tape about your true feelings. 
Well, you know, the lit one linked audio tape is probably the tip of the iceberg. Is there more? And, you know, when we look at the roots of this, I mean, it's not just the comments that were made in October of a year ago. It's also the ground that allows these comments to be made. I respect the two gentlemen who've talked about building black brown bridges, but I think we have to be honest and say that while we're building some bridges, there are other connections that are fraying. And part of this is a, res a result of the predatory capitalism impact on having black brown competition. Hmm. But the fact is that the, that woman, the Nori um, Martinez, I don't even understand how someone could have such an attitude I also call a colleague a little rabbit with witch. I mean, it's just reprehensible that colleagues would behave this way. And as a as a college dean, what I would ask is, what kind of example are they giving to our young people? Hmm. What are they teaching our young people? Well, let's hear from uh, someone in the community. And the reaction, of course, has been very swift to this uh, leaked audio. Protesters, in fact, immediately took the streets, even in front of Nuri Martinez's house, demanding her resignation. Here's some response to what Martina said from a local mother. Because it's not acceptable. Uh, their apologies are trash to me. They're trash. Because of people like that, this is what makes people not want to vote, not want to participate, not want to help out. It's because of people like this. Well, the community is obviously upset over the comments from Council Member Martinez. Reverend Walter Contreras, how much damage has this done? And can the community move forward? from this, since we're hearing from so many community members. The only way we can move forward is if those people who said that they apologize, if they truly are sincere, they will step down. Mm. There should not be no tolerance for this kind of a speech because it speaks from what is in, in their hearts. We as Christians, we as leaders of faith, we believe that come, what comes out of here is coming out from here. So we must do that. We must stay united. I work very hard. We're working very hard to keep both communities together to fight against, you know, not only racism, but there is stereotyping. There is hiring. We, we look at the way we are hiring and why we're discriminating against African Americans. So my call as a Latino is to tell other Latinos to stand up for what is right and have the right moral authority not to tolerate this. The best thing that they can do if we want to move forward, they got to step down. All Please. right, uh, Dr. Bowie, I'm going to give you um, the last word here. I agree with um, Pastor Contreras. Uh, he and I have worked together uh, and we have built bridges among ourselves. Uh, I believe that number one, we cannot judge all our, our brown sisters and brothers by just a few. And I have been fortunate enough to work with Churla, able to work with Clue and other Hispanic or Latina or Latino organizations. I think right now, here's an opportunity. We can remain angry, but we need to gather those who are on the same page, who are black and brown, who say this is a wake up call and an opportunity for us not to just simply preach about who we are, but the opportunity to live out here in Los Angeles and be the model, not only for Los Angeles, but for the whole country. And we have that opportunity because let me say this, number one is being a preacher. Redemption of our people is always important. And I want to get together with my brown and brown sisters and brothers who want to walk together to build the future that our forefathers like Cesar Chavez and Martin Luther King who united together and have moved us forward to where we are today. So I say I want us to look back that we may look forward that we can have that brighter future and I'm willing to work with those brown sisters and brothers who want to do that. Okay, I could see Dr. Malvo. All right, I want to give you, I'm going to give you the last word, Dr. Malvo, because both of the gentlemen here spoke on, they touched on something, economic impact, disparities. And you mentioned that at the beginning of this interview about how things can change, how they can only change, besides the people that said those reprehensive words to step down. But just take a look at the impact of what they have said or what they were discussing. In yeah, terms of I'm financial impact. 
The structural piece is the most important piece. They can step down and they can be replaced with similar races. They can step, the, you know, so it's really, what can we do about an economic structure that essentially rewards oppression? Because that's what's happening. And much of the black-brown conflict is, as the brother said, our, 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 the reverend, who gets the jobs? You know, we have to ask those kind of questions. Who gets jobs? Can we distribute jobs more evenly? And can we have conversations, open conversations about what this economic oppression is about and who benefits from it? So because we're pretty much in the same space often, but we don't pay attention to that same space. We choose to use that to compete. The conversation was not only reprehensible because of the epithets that were used, but it's also reprehensible because of the sensibility that allowed them to use those epithets. Well, Dr. Julianne Malvo, Reverend Walter Contreras, and Reverend William Bowie, thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening and really shining a big spotlight on not only that conversation, but what needs to happen to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to our viewers, don't go anywhere. We have a lot more coverage on the city council controversy coming up. We'll have the political fallout about what's next for the city council, for the members involved, and an expert who you know weighs in next. CBS 2 News is sponsored by Rotolo Chevrolet, California's Chevy sales leader. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you for everything you've done for LA. Thank you, Jaime. It's been my honor to bring baseball to Angelinos for 64 years. The memories, the friendships, they will be with me forever. So it is I who thanks you. Rotolo Chevrolet thanks Jaime Harin for his decades of broadcasting excellence and will donate a vehicle to the Jaime and Blanca Harin Foundation. All the best, Jaime. Tom Cruise going to space. This is quite a moment. Plus, Dwayne Johnson's life as a carpool dad. I got every drop off, every pickup. Coming up on ET. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS2. I'm here. Fire and rescue is out. They're doing wellness checks when people are trapped inside their homes. How's the pay? A lot better. That's you and the queen. That's beautiful. Every year, the wildfires and smoke seem to get worse. There is actual particles on every single surface. California has the worst air pollution in the country. The top two causes are vehicles and wildfires. Prop 30 helps clean our air. It will reduce the tailpipe emissions that poison our air. And helps prevent the wildfires that create toxic smoke. That's why Cal Fire Firefighters, the American Lung Association, and the Coalition for Clean Air support Prop 30. I'm voting yes on 30. All across the country, health care clinics that provide abortions are being shut down by extreme Republican politicians. In state after state, fundamental freedoms are vanishing. Women are under attack. But this November, we say not here. Prop 1 will enshrine reproductive rights in the California Constitution. So clinics remain open, abortion remains legal, and California remains a freedom state forever. Yes on Prop 1. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson. The Tucson comes standard with complimentary maintenance and America's best warranty. See your SoCal Hyundai dealer. Never let Scott Baugh make our laws. Baugh does not support abortion in any form. No exceptions for rape, even incest. Scott Baugh, another vote to ban abortion nationwide, including California. For Orange County's priorities, Katie Porter. Fed up with gas prices, Porter passed a bill to crack down on Big Oil's price gouging. And a new law empowering Medicare to negotiate lower drug costs. Orange County priorities. That's Katie Porter. I'm Katie Porter, and I approve this message. Southern California's deadliest roads exposed tonight at 11. Welcome back, and we continue to follow our top story tonight. L.A. City Council President Nuri Martinez and Council Members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo caught on tape making racist and offensive remarks. Martinez has stepped down as president, but she has not resigned 
from the council and neither has De Leon or Cedillo. Of course, Nuzia, Cedillo is already out. I think he has until January to serve, but joining us now to talk about all this political fallout is Dr. Fernando Guerra. He's a professor of political science at Loyola Marymount University and certainly uh, no stranger to us here at uh, CBS2 and KCAL 9. Dr. Guerra, thanks so much. Let's jump right in though. Sure. What is next for council member Martinez, whether she stays on the city council or not? Is her political career over? Well, the uh, career of an elected official is dependent on winning elections. I do not believe she can win another election. That is the case. Now, she does have two years remaining in her current term, and we'll see whether she uh, resigns that or not. But uh, if you're asking me, is her career, political career over? Yes, it is e either over right now or within the next two years. I don't see her winning re-election in her district or winning any other political office. Wow, that's that's really, you know, to hear something like that, considering uh, just from a leaked audio tape and just the messages yeah. that were on that recording to have one's career just be over like that. And asking you this question as well, because, you know, people have talked about, well, our memories can be short. But in this instance, you don't see that playing out, do you? Oh, no, there's no way. I mean, this uh, tape and this conversation and this narrative has been going on throughout the last two days. E everybody's going to remember this. There's no way that she would be able to uh, run for office in two years and not have people bring this up and remind everybody about what happened. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, most pe people realize these remarks, as terrible as they were, were actually directed at a three-year-old year child. I think yeah. that even makes it, as bad as the remarks were, the, the context is even more horrible. Well, Dr. Guerra, where does LA leadership go from here? Can city council regain the public's trust? As you have said, this has been heard and yeah. talked about over and over, and it's not over yet. It will constantly be talked about. So how do they regain the city, the, the people's trust, the city council? Well, Number one, they have to universally condemn this, and you see that happening. And so that that they're one when it comes to that this is not unacceptable. They have to convince us that others don't think this way. And, and it's really tough. I mean, we at Loyola Marymount University have been tracking trust in government in terms of public opinion, and it has declined. And it's and once you lose that trust, it is really difficult to uh, claim it back. And so it's a tough road. But the other thing is, um, I find it hard to believe that many members didn't know the proclivity mm. of Councilwoman Martinez in terms of being crass and having these type of racist tendencies. And if that's the case, we expect our elected officials to stop supporting and going along uh, in, in the in closed doors when people express these opinions. Uh, we expect it at the workplace. We expect it at schools. I think we need to expect it from our public officials that when they hear this kind of stuff, they got to say, hey, you got to stop. It, you're, you're really reflecting what we are all about, not just you. Almost. If you see something, say something. Or if you hear exactly. something, say something. Exactly. Okay, Dr. Guerra, only have a minute. So this, is, this, this really has to do with politics. If none of the members involved resign, despite the calls for them to step down, yeah. what's the recourse? Can they be removed? I know we've had some council members suspended, of course, pending mm -hmm. some legal ramifications. So what, what could happen? Can they be removed? So, no, I mean, they can resign on their own, correct? Uh, they could be recalled, but that's about a six to eight month process. And of course, they can be defeated uh, at their next reelection. Um, I do not believe that the city council or the mayor or even the district attorney have the right to remove them right now. Uh, when we talk about Mark Ridley Thomas or Jose Wizar, they were suspended because they were indicted in court. That's not going to happen here. Um, and so, you know, you can censure them, but they will be a full voting member until they resign or recalled or do not run for office or get defeated in reelection. Dr. Fernando Guerra, always a pleasure to have us uh, with you, with us today, and of course to share right. your insights and uh, impart your knowledge to us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Now, our coverage of the LA City Council fallout continues online. You can find the leaked audio recording, response from local politicians, the community, and much more. Just head to CBSLA.com or download the CBSLA app.